In this video we'll continue to look at unit conversions but we'll try some more complex examples. So let's take this example. At 25 degrees Celsius water has a density of 0.997 grams per milliliter and we want to convert this density to grams per liter. So here we're converting from a compound unit of grams per mil to another compound unit grams per liter. This may seem a bit weird and different to our other examples, but exactly the same conversion principles apply. First, we need to write the value that we know as a fraction along with its unit. Here, the compound unit is grams per milliliter. Per means divided by. So grams per milliliter is more properly written like this. So we'll put the value up the top and the compound unit next to it with grams on top and milliliters underneath. Now we don't need to change the grams, we just want to change the denominator from mils to litres. So what we need is the conversion factor from mils to litres. Now we know that 1000 millilitres is equivalent to 1 litre and we want to cancel out the millilitres so they're going to go on the bottom. And now we cancel our units and we complete the calculation and we get that the density is 997 grams per litre. Which if you think about it makes sense, if 1 millilitre has a mass of 0.997, then 1000 millilitres, that's a litre, must have a mass of 1000 times that, which is 997. It's always good to do a little common sense check uh, of your calculations when you've done a conversion. OK, let's try an example where we need to change both parts of a compound unit. When Sally Pearson won the 100 metre hurdles at the 2012 World Championships, she ran at an average speed of 8.10 metres per second. Let's convert this to kilometres per hour, which is a speed unit that you're probably more familiar with. First, write what you know, with the compound unit arranged appropriately. Metres on the top, per means divided by, seconds on the bottom. Now, we need to convert the metres into kilometres and the seconds into hours. Now, don't fret about this being difficult. It's not. We just treat the two conversions separately. First, let's deal with the metres. Put in the conversion factor for metres to kilometres and cancel out the metres. If we were to do the calculation now, we would end up with a speed that was in kilometres per second because we haven't dealt with the seconds yet. So let's now convert the seconds to hours. Let's go to minutes first. Now note that the units don't have to be directly next to each other for you to be able to cancel them. They're just part of the numerator or denominator of one big fraction. Uh, and now we'll convert the minutes to hours. And there we are, just a fraction under 30 kilometres an hour. Okay, last example. Google says that the volume of a small grain of rice is 2 times 10 to the minus 8 metres cubed. But who wants to measure the volume of such a small thing using such a big unit? Let's convert this value into millimetres cubed. The thing to realise here is that when you have a unit with an exponent like this, it means the same thing as it does with a number. So if you have 2 cubed, it means 2 times 2 times 2. Here you have metres cubed, and that means metres times metres times metres, which makes sense if you think about it. These three metre units refer to the three dimensions of a cube, its length, its width and its height. So what we need to do here is to convert metres to millimetres three times over, one for each of those three metre units. So we just run through those conversions one after the other, like this. and we find that the volume of a small grain of rice is about 20 cubic millimetres.